Hello, hello. All right, we are going to talk about AFT, which is Aroma Freedom Technique. Pretty much everything came from this book, is backwards, the Aroma Freedom Technique. Okay, this gives you the 12 step process of AFT, and it teaches you a little bit about how like how it was created, what the oils have to do with it, what your mind has to do with it, negative, positive emotions. So we're gonna, just gonna basically talk about um, what's in here. So I'm gonna pull up my screen here. Give me a second. Let's share this so then you guys can follow along. All right, so, oops. Okay, AFT, Aroma Freedom Technique. This allows you to connect to the dreams that spring from your heart, identify and release exactly what is holding you back, use essential oils to transform negative beliefs and emotions, discover how to permanently integrate deep change, and also make a daily habit of intentional living and create focus. Okay, the amazing power of scent. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, so let's just briefly talk about it. At the level of the brain, the limbic system, which is the amygdala, hippocampus, and a few other glands in your brain, it's also known as the seat of your emotions. Hi, Steph. Come on in. We just started. We're talking about the limbic system and how it's the seat of your emotions. It determines in a split second whether we're in danger or not. Reactions to smells I, are automatic because they are involved in very basic survival mechanisms. So for example, if you smell rotten food, you know not to eat it because you could get sick. Or on the adverse side, if you smell rose petals, you're gonna be happy and peaceful. We can use this automatic triggering power intentionally to create emotional changes. That's basically what, what AFT is all about, aroma freedom technique. Smell is also famously able to trigger memory. It is this feature of instant and irresistible triggering of memories and their associate feelings that make the AFT oh, sorry. so effective. Central oil. Each essential oil may contain dozens or even hundreds of different molecules, and it's the synergy of these components that create the effectiveness when you use them, specifically during this technique. Well, by anywhere that are made in a laboratory, they, have, they may have a similar and they also create a toxic reaction and they do not possess the therapeutic benefit of a pure essential oil. And they also do not possess any of the qualities of soul or energy that genuine oils have. So if someone uses Young Living Essential Oils, has to be assured of their purity and their ability to retain the life force essence of the plant, which is what we want. Oils may also be blended to express a specific intention such as foster feelings of joy and hope, inspiration, or abundance. AFT, Aroma Freedom Technique, uses specific blends that we'll talk about to process negative emotion or negative memories, connect us to positive memories, or form associations with positive thoughts and intentions. The key oils to the memory release blend, which is specific to AFT, is Young Living's Dress Away, their frankincense, and their lavender. And it's equal parts of these two. Also, you can use oils like Release, Believe, and Inspiration. I have Clarity here, and I have Believe. Those are the two that I've chosen. Emotional balance. Okay, so your emotions are telling you to solve the problem, basically to right the wrong, to free the loss, to make the connection. And when your emotions are overwhelming or when they are out of proportion to what is currently happening in your life, that is likely a sign that something from the past is being triggered. It's very confusing. Some people are wanting to be free from bad memories, regrets, or haunting feelings about what did or did not happen. 
Some people feel trapped by feelings of sadness or giving. Some people would say that they have a broken life but want it to be even better. So called negative emotions, especially, should be seen as a way to communicate something that needs. So there's a little example in the book that I'm going to read. And Steph, do you mind um, muting? Finish the video. <gasps> Oops. That's okay. <laughs> Everyone, uh, do it. So it's not just you. But... Honey, do you know how to mute it? Oh. <laughs> Good job. All right, let me find. Here we go. So let's say this is an example of, um, I guess you would call it a clean exchange of emotions, okay? So let's imagine you and I are facing each other and we're having a conversation. You come a little too close and you accidentally step on my toe. I feel the pain and I immediately say, ouch, get off my foot. You hear that and you scoop back and you say, oh, I'm sorry, it was an accident. And then I say, it's okay, no worry, no problem. We move on with the conversation and we never think of it again, okay? So this is a clean exchange of emotions. Now, there is another side of this that um, can be a different scenario, okay? Say you first stepped on my toe and I did not cry out, okay? Um, perhaps I thought it was impolite or maybe I just think that um, what you were saying was so important that I didn't want to interrupt you. And as the conversation progressed, my toe got more and more hurt and I became angrier at you and I didn't express it. So now, because I didn't cry out right away, um, because my, my feeling of need got unmet, I begin to feel resentment. And so now this cycle of emotional imbalance has begun. So I will walk around with unresolved emotions. Maybe a few days later, I'll see you and I yell at you for something that's really silly. And then you'll be perplexed and you'll begin to blame me for being rude when the whole problem was way back when you stepped on my toe and I didn't say anything and we didn't resolve the issue. So this, of course, is like a tiny little example, but this gets manifested years and years and years and years of stuffing down these emotions and not expressing and resolving how we feel. And it literally changes the, the direction of our life and our relationships and our work. Okay. So emotion, emotional expression is hardwired into humans from infancy and into animals as well. However, as we navigate through childhood, we may experience pivotal moments in which we have an emotional reaction like hurt, abuse, being overpowered, distress, fear, sadness, anger, which may not be expressed for any number of reasons. We know kids can't express themselves very well. So when we feel emotionally unbalanced, it usually means that we are being triggered by events that are activation, um, actually issues from our past. Okay, so when we feel that unbalanced um, emotion, it's, it's probably triggered from our past. The trouble is we often don't realize that it's from the past and that those emotions are fueling our current behavior. This is where it gets tricky sometimes, right? Expressive versus reactive, okay? Expressive emotions is the rush of energy that arises when we become imbalanced because a need that we currently have is not being met. So this is you stepping on my toe and me saying, ouch, so that would be expressive. Okay, reactive emotion is when an unfulfilled need from the past gets triggered by a present situation that is similar in some way. It is fundamentally a distortion of current reality. So an example of this is a situation that is only slightly dangerous, may be perceived as life-threatening, or a normal question may be interpreted as a hostile remark. This happens a lot in marriage, does it not? <laughs> okay, fear conditioning. Our emotions are primarily designed to help us meet our needs. Okay, so they're not bad, they're not good, they're, just, they're there and they're designed um, to help us feel safe. 
our body is created for survival and emotions are part of that survival mechanism. When we encounter a situation that feels dangerous, we form an association between details of that event and the concept of danger. Then in the future, when we encounter a situation with similar details, we are on the lookout for danger that may be coming. This is fear conditioning. So for example, a rabbit, okay, um, say he was out drinking water at the watering hole and he encountered a fox. The fox chased it, but it was just, but the rabbit just barely escaped. So the rabbit learns from his experience that the watering hole is a dangerous place. Okay, so fear conditioning in this situation is a survival strategy. And if our ancestors had not been good at this, they would not have survived long enough to give birth to us. Okay, so this is, this is, this is good. So the, the same holds true though for situations that are not life threatening. For example, if a child is embarrassed in class, he may develop an aversion to school or to that particular teacher or group of students. Again, this is a survival mechanism. Although not physically in danger, he wants to avoid the painful feeling of embarrassment connected with that type of situation. Okay, now there's two ways to look at our experiences, okay? There is the side of the rabbit running from the fox. Oh, I can never go outside of my home because that fox is gonna chase me. So that's a negative perspective or the, the rabbit could think, hey, I outran the fox. That's a positive way of looking at it, okay? Knowing that I'm not gonna put myself in danger, but if it does happen again, I can get through it, okay? And that's how we deal with things as well. That's how we um, kind of condition ourselves to think. So here's some examples of a self-image, positive and negative. So you can think I am rich, or you can think I am poor. I am safe, or I'm in danger. I'm strong, I am weak, I'm smart, I'm stupid, I'm beautiful, I'm ugly. I'm confident, I am overwhelmed. So same experience, different thought process. Okay, so the AFT process will help us to reprogram these limited beliefs in order to reshape our subconscious beliefs to conform more closely with our consciously held goals and ideas so we don't have that constant war going on between our head and our heart. So let's go to the AFT and the 12 step process. Now I ran out of time to finish my PowerPoint. Um, so I have five slides, but I have the book. So we'll just kind of read what I have. So intro to AFT, okay? Our belief systems are built up through our childhood as, as a result of assigning meaning to events that we live through. It is not what happens to us that makes us who we are, but rather, it is more accurate to say that we make ourselves who we are through the way that we respond to the events in our lives. We literally program our minds in an attempt to keep us safe. Page 57, there's a story here. Um, this man named Peter was somebody that this person, Dr. Benjamin Perkis, um, worked with. So he went through a divorce um, when he was a child. He lived through his parents' divorce when he was a child. And he created this belief system that nothing is stable. And he was not able to process this belief as a child. So he grew up with the belief that nothing is stable. Okay, so mm, he would avoid the pain of being let down. He would manifest situations in his life where he avoided being let down. So he resisted making commitments because he did not believe that he would be able to follow through. Um, he did not let himself depend on others because he anticipated that they would let him down, things like that. The problem with having the belief that nothing is stable is that it, that it limited the kind of life he could build. It put a limit on his abundance. So he worked with um, Dr. Benjamin Perkis here. And Dr. Benjamin Perkis walked him through the AFT. And so they, they found out the belief that nothing is stable. Okay, in order to reprogram this belief, 
I asked him to find an image from childhood that captured this sense that nothing is stable. So he pictured moving to new houses several times, parents coming and going, switching schools, etc. And I had him visualize it, I, the doctor, had him visualize it as a mini movie, as a series of events that could have the subtitle, nothing is stable. So while he was watching the movie, he identified the feelings of sadness, frustration, disappointment, loss, confusion, and he felt these emotions in particular places of his body. Um, it gave him dizziness, it gave him nausea, and like a sinking, a sinking feeling, okay? So um, after they discovered the feelings, um, I had Peter smell the memory release oil mixture, which is our stress away, frankincense, and lavender, equal parts of that. Um, and he breathed it for about two minutes. He reported that he felt himself shaking slightly and almost being tearful as some more memories from that time flooded back. Afterwards, a kind of quietness came over him. He now felt that the statement, nothing is stable, was neither true or false. He had deprogrammed the belief just by sitting in the pain and smelling the aroma. So now he had two options, okay? This didn't really solve any problem. It just separated him from the feeling. So it created a state of openness that created the space for new possibilities. So he wasn't stuck anymore. He could choose to remove himself from it. So he could either one, just remain in the openness of no belief in relationship to those events from childhood and allow new feelings and attitudes to coalesce over the coming hours and days. Or two, he might know immediately what belief he would rather have and replace it, replace the new belief with the old one. It could be as simple as that happened and I'm okay. Or he could also have a sense of forgiving his parents or a peaceful acceptance of what had happened. In this case, Peter said that he realized that in order to grow, he needed to set down roots. Okay, so now he was, he felt ready to change that belief and live from a more empowering position. And he came up with the affirmation it is safe and rewarding to set roots down. So that's the process of AFT and how you kind of twist and turn through the process, okay? Let's see, let's go to step one. So there's 12 steps. Step one is set your goal or intention. So first you have to use um, oils like clarity or highest potential inspiration. Think about what you really want because if you don't set goals, then you'll simply live out the goals and dreams of other people or drift through life without ever claiming what you really want. You have to be specific with your goals. You have to be rational with your goals. You can't say something like, I want to get a job that pays me $100,000 and I want it by next month. Probably not. Good. That is specific, but it's not very rational. Okay, give yourself more time. Give yourself a plan and a, and a roadmap. And it must excite you and give you butterflies, this goal. If it doesn't give you butterflies, if it doesn't make you scared, then it's not big enough or it's not really something that you want. Questions to help you? Okay, because as adults, we tend to stop dreaming, especially when you have kids, right? You're living your life for your kids and your husband and you're serving them and it's wonderful and beautiful, um, but we forget how to um, tap into what you know, what we want, what dreams we want, or what dreams we wanted, or what, what we want to work for in the future. So questions like, what would I want if money were no object? Questions like, what would I do if I knew I would not fail? What job would I do for no money? What is my heart's desire? What are my special talents, gifts, and abilities? What needs to be done in the world that I feel a passion to do? So these questions help you get a direction. Um, when the water flows freely, we feel that we ourselves are in the flow or in the groove or in the pocket. And we are in the magical space where everything comes together to support our success. 
we need to clean out the dirt in the hose if we want our goals to manifest. And that is the next step, cleaning out the hose. Your inner voice, oh my word. Listen to the voice inside that tells you all the reasons why you can't have what you are intending to have. As soon as you say your intention, you're going to hear voices. You're going to hear that little negative voice inside of you say either rational things like, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have the support, I don't have the education or the knowledge, or you're going to hear that little voice say things even worse like, you're stupid, your parents wouldn't approve, you have no idea how to do that, you don't have enough willpower, you've tried it before and you failed. This is our survival mechanism. Okay, we have to listen to the voice, we have to sit in the pain of that, we have to write it down or confront it or just pay attention to it, okay? Negative messages are there to protect us. The trouble is they protect us by keeping us stuck where we are versus helping us manifest a goal that would allow us to live a more satisfying life. So how do we do this? One, we can combat, combat the negative messages with positive ones, okay? As is sometimes taught when people learn to do affirmations, okay? So replacing the bad with the good. Um, Another approach is to listen to the voices without becoming attached to them, which is kind of like what meditation is and being mindful and that kind of stuff. Or we can go deeper inside and use the AFT process to dissolve the negative thoughts by releasing the emotional charge that has been holding that negative voice in place. Okay, so that takes us to step three, which is identify the feeling that that negative voice or negative excuse brings you. Identify how you feel when you think about the negative thoughts. If the message is you're stupid, this might make you feel ashamed or sad or depressed or nervous or incompetent. Um, and remember that feelings are best expressed by a single word. So try to keep it simple. Keep it simple. Number four, body awareness. Where do you feel this negative feeling in your body? Every emotional experience has a physical correlate. Our nervous system is designed to recoil from pain. Just as we pull away from a hot stove, we tend to pull away from painful emotions and feelings. Feelings are like waves. I learned a little bit about this when I was giving birth. <laughs> um, to ride the wave of pain and don't try to stop it. Because when you try to resist it and stop it, um, it gets worse, right? And we get stuck. So feelings are like waves. And like waves, no feeling lasts forever. If we allow the wave to move through us or ride the wave, it will rise in intensity, reach a peak, and then recede, leaving no trace. If we resist the emotion, we will be caught in a perpetual struggle against the wave. Usually a person will feel an emotion first and then they can lo locate it in their body. Sometimes if people are super separated from their emotions or they're just really turned off or shut down, they have a pain in their body and then they can work backwards. Like think of the pain and then try to find the emotion that's in that part of the body, okay? Next step, once you have the body awareness, time travel, drift to an earlier time in your mind. It could be recently or long ago when you felt that same way, when your body felt that same pain or when you felt that same feeling. Um, when I am in a specific feeling state, it is easier to remember other times when I had that same feeling because feelings are linked together. A current feeling of anger is built upon, built up and up and up and up on top of all those other experiences of, angers, of anger. Um, so every time you're angry, it's kind of categorized in that same area. So you build up these memories of that same feeling. Uh, Brenda, ah, we can skip Brenda, that's okay. We're running out of time. Okay, 
Smell essential oils. Okay, this is where I ran out of time. <laughs> okay, so if you have an oil right now, whatever you have, go ahead and put it on. I'm going to put my clarity on. Okay, close your eyes. Focus on the snapshot of that memory that comes to your mind when you think of that feeling, when you think of that body part hurting. Focus on the snapshot of that memory, the feeling, the negative thought, and the bodily sensation while smelling the memory release essential oil mixture, frankincense, lavender, and stress away. For the second round, use inner child. I forgot to grab that one. And for the third round, if needed, use release. So a lot of times, uh, for some people, we're able to release a negative memory right away. Sometimes we have to do this process a couple times. Um, so they're just kind of giving you different suggestions on different oils that can help you. So when you're smelling the essential oil, it allows the whole memory complex to shift. Just by thinking of the memory, thinking of the feeling, thinking of the body part that hurts, and smelling the oil at the same time. It's a mystery how it happens, but it shifts. God's creation is amazing. So, smelling the oil disrupts the memory complex itself. The oil stimulates a new feeling, which in a sense, displaces the previously identified feeling. Because two feelings cannot occupy the same space at the same time, the memory complex dissolves. How cool is that? Automatically and sometimes immediately, it induces a different feeling state. Okay, so step seven. So this is where I should probably just shut down this. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, step seven. Notice the change. Allow whatever feelings that surface to just pass through you as you smell the oil. Ride the wave of emotion if it gets intense. See what happens to the image and how you feel in your body. So because we are created to survive, we're going to have every part of our body try to stop us from experiencing this wave and riding the wave, getting to the peak and watching it reside. So we have to fight that natural tendency to shut it down. You could be crying. The first time I had a emotional release, I was, I don't even know what the word is, like heaving, <laughs> shaking, heaving, ugly crying. It was, it was a hot mess, but I was shut down for a really long time. So just kind of came along with that. Okay. Um, the feeling may become more intense before it dissipates. So don't be discouraged. Just ride the wave if the emotion intensifies. Also keep smelling the oils. Smell the oils. Remember that feelings are just waves and no wave lasts forever. Number eight, you have your new beliefs emerging. Notice new beliefs starting to emerge. Find the light breaking through the memory. Do you get any new creative ideas? So the memory may fade, the memory may blur, it may shift to something else, to like another negative memory that you'll have to like start over at step two and kind of walk through that memory now. Just go with the flow. It's different for everybody. Um, I underline like everything in this book. It's so good. Let's see. When you are using the AFT process, you want to be actively looking for a positive belief to emerge from the ashes of the dissolving memory complex. When you do this, you are taking ownership of your life and choosing to take yourself in a new direction. Don't pretend to believe a positive thought if you are still stuck in negativity, but rather look for the opening, the ray of light you can find that shows you a way out of the previously stuck attitude or just take that new memory and start over with step two and work your way through it. Okay, step nine, re, what time is it? Cool. 
read the original goal or intention that you started with and kind of look at it again and see what you hear in your head or what excuses you have. Okay. It may be, you may hear nothing negative. You may hear a little bit negative, but not as negative as it was before. So just pay attention to how you feel and you might need to do the whole process again to get it back to where you feel empowered in this new intention. Remember that the original idea was to free ourselves up so that we could reach our goal. That's the whole point of this, to be free and to live in that abundance that God wants us to have. By identifying and clearing that negative beliefs, feelings, and memories, the energy should be flowing more freely now in the direction that we had intended. Step 10, new outlook, new attitude. Create an affirmation for yourself that expresses the new positive belief and attitude that you wish to instill. Okay, so I am productive and focused today. I learn easily and remember what I have learned. I am thoughtful and considerate wife or husband. I am peaceful and kind throughout the day. I choose to be radiant even when others are being negative. And remember your, aff your affirmation that you create must be in the present tense. It's what you want to step into. Um, to find a good affirmation organically, you can ask, what is the positive voice saying now? Sometimes we have already heard the voice in our head say something like, you've got this, or be open to change, but it gets repressed by our survival mechanism. So it could be inside of you already. You just don't know how to pull it out. Step 11, anchor your new reality. Smell believe or transformation essential oil. Repeat your affirmations two minutes, three times a day with confidence, every morning, every night, while standing in a power position. This is where it gets kind of goofy, but if you do it, you will love it, okay? So the power position is either like standing up with your hands on your hips, with your chest out, and looking up and saying your affirmation, or for me, my power position is my hands out. Like I am receiving the goodness and the abundance of God. And I'm saying my affirmation and smelling my oil and praying and saying scripture, whatever, and I'm receiving. So that's my power pose. So whatever you feel like doing this guy is like, yeah. <laughs> so whatever. And I usually do this by myself in my room so nobody can see me. Okay, step 12, put it all into action. So make a plan and take action daily. You must now take action in order to realize your goal. So you've done the work, but now you have to step into what can often be scary. So you're, you may need to continue to re-go re through the steps to um, get those negative voices out of your head, to locate the root of those negative sayings and feelings that you have, and work through different things as you go. Okay, so I'm going to get shut off here. Uh, i got four more minutes. So, um, Stephanie, I'm pretty sure. Do you have any questions? You can unmute yourself and ask. I'm pretty sure you have all these oils. This is an awesome book. You can borrow it if you want. But I think it's on Amazon. I don't know. And then there's also, I can screenshot for you. The quick reference this is everything I just talked about. And a very quick reference guide. So if you have any questions, just let me know. If not, I will see you soon. I don't have any questions. Hi. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry about the loud. <laughs> no, it's totally okay. Thank you for muting. It's it's part of it. So no worries. Thanks for joining me. I love I love this AFT. I just kind of got through reading the book because I um I usually use my blue book. But this is, it's super easy and super user friendly and it's an awesome resource, so. Okay, cool. Yeah, I hadn't heard about it or anything, so. Yeah, and people get certified in AFT. I'm not certified in AFT, but this book pretty much tells you everything you need to know. So if you want, um, I can help you find this book or send you the steps or whatever. Whatever you wanna do, I'll help you with. 
Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Have a good night. Okay, bye. Bye.